before I, I want to ask about the Vanguard teacher program, the teacher leadership program, uh, tell what, like when you say, Eric, when you say innovative learning, what is innovative learning? What does that mean to you? Well, I think that it's really looking for those connections. You know, sometimes I think, uh, the word innovation, I think it's a misconception that you're just always going to be on the cusp and always right. doing something new. Um, <laughs> but it is, uh, it is in these new things that we are able to reflect and make adjustments and look for connections and, and use our relationships uh, and our, our information and the ability to work across the district, across every content area, every grade level, and looking for those connections to be able to do things, you know, in a better way. Yeah. And you said like that actually in, in innovators mindset, um, which is, you know, my book, <laughs> right. So, well, it was like, Oh, I was going to do shout out, but I was just like, had, uh, that button for some reason ready to go. I don't know why. So, uh, so like I actually, you said both things, right. It's about being new and better. Like it hat and the better is crucial. Right. Cause I think a lot of times people that say they're on the cutting edge, and this is an issue with school districts all over the world. They're always trying to do the new thing. They're not good at the last thing. And they just, you know, it's just this cycle. And then we're like, why are teachers so burnt out? And I'm like, because you're teaching them 80 million tools every year. Um, and they, they just, they want to be good at these things, but they don't, they're just, some people just start waiting it out. They're like, look, they're going to teach this, but in two months they are going to teach this thing. Let's just, I'm going to ignore all of it. Right. And just do what I feel as opposed to like, Hey, how do we actually dig deep? How do we, you know, create better opportunities for our kids? And I think like even this podcast, um, I would actually say, um, is hopefully, and I'm not saying podcasting is innovation, but because I, you know, for me, it was innovative to start it. But like it evolved from uh, in my basement with a mic on my phone to like having better equipment, being more thoughtful. Of, like, what are some of the different things I can do with this? Like, what are some of the, you know, and, you know, they like get started with just me. And then it now it's starting with guests. Right. And it's like, but if I don't have that time to like evolve it and, and create something that I think is way better than what it started as. Uh, yeah, of course it's just going to be, but a lot of people just kind of like, Hey, I'm going to start a podcast, do it for two times. And then they move on to the next thing and then they never gain any traction with their stuff. So I think it's, you know, true in so many aspects uh, of life. Uh, I'm really interested to hear about this Vanguard teacher leadership program and, uh, just kind of like what, what's the, what's the, uh, program itself, what's the intent and what do you kind of see, uh, the effect of it long-term? So Eric or Amy, whoever like to start, I'd love, I, I know, I know a lot of people know you for this, uh, for this program, uh, at Frederick County public schools in Maryland. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what is, so tell us what, tell us about this program. Right. And so years ago, I think about 2015, 2016 school year, we, we were starting to go towards one-to-one -one and, and we were a district trying to figure out how to scale professional learning and, and looking at blended learning. And, um, and we certainly are, were not the first to kind of think about this, but um, looking at the work of, of Everett Rogers and, and diffusion of innovation. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we get to, you know, the, the, the idea of innovators and early adopters and then early majority, late majority and, and laggards. And, and really that the best way to look at early majority and late majority to get them on board was to support the innovators and early adopters uh, really well and have them help us to develop a system that the early majority could latch on to um, and, and to bring others along with them. And so it was this idea of investing in teacher leadership that uh, and really investing in those innovators and early adopters when it came to technology and instruction and um, blended learning and personalized learning models. And so that's where we really spent our time. And we learned a lot from uh, Dr. Stephanie Stevens, um, who worked in Fulton County, Georgia at the time and is now with Microsoft. And, um, and she did a lot for us to say, you know, here's what we're doing and started that sharing that helped us to get our program together. And so today it's evolved into, uh, it's a three-year program. It's a cohort-based model. 
where they focus on the first year on uh, teaching and just being able to mm -hmm. try blended models, try things out, um, see what works and what doesn't in which circumstances. And then they move into the second year of the program, which is uh, the leadership year. And so in that lead year, now they get to share what they've tried. You know, not that they've become an expert in blended learning and instructional technology, but they get to share what all they're doing. And then in the third year um, is the coach role. And so they've been doing it for two years. They've figured some things out. They're sharing with others and they're coaching and mentoring those um, that are in the other cohorts of the program, as well as others in their schools and across their content areas. And, and really the end result has been, and, and our intent is that uh, they become these embedded coaches throughout our school system. There, we have Vanguard teachers in, uh, currently in 55 schools um, in every content area, you know, every grade level. And what that allows us to do is to, to really leverage them for innovation. And so when things like a pandemic occurs and we need support and we need mentoring for other teachers who don't know what they're going to do to teach virtually or to uh, teach in some sort of concurrent model where they have students at home and in front of them at the same time, we were you know, sort of accidentally prepared almost right. for that type of a situation because we had teachers in almost every school in our district that not only were um, had some experience with blended models, but they had the confidence, they were comfortable with coaching others. Right. And so, um, yes, it's really about blended and personalized learning and that becomes the content, but the, the intent and the natural progression of them as you know, leaders and coaches in our district has really been a, just an, an amazing outcome for us as a district. And, and we look forward to continuing to, to build on that and to continue to add. We're, we're going through the selection process for our sixth cohort right now, um, going through this program and um, excited to have this, this team. And Amy, can I ask you like, how, how are like, how are the people who are in this program like identified? How do they become a part of this in your school district? Well, they, they have an application process. So they, they choose to apply for the program. They give us evidence of, of their different um, capabilities within different tracks. So whether it's, uh, you know, leadership, um, how they're leveraging technology right now. We've always said that we, we really want people to be pointed in the right direction. They don't need to be down the path, mm -hmm. but they need to be pointed in the right direction. And then the program itself will lift them up with the professional learning network and help them move along that path. And they'll move along with people. Right. right. Um, so when they go through that process, they also have recommendations from their administrators. Um, we love the fact that our vanguards help us reach out to other potential vanguards. So every year uh, we always make sure that our current vanguards send personal notes out to people that they think are ready to join the program. Right. So we really try and just like Eric said, we leverage our own professional learning network within the program to reach out to people who are ready for the opportunity. Love that. We actually, so in my school district, uh, I led this program. It was like, it has elements that there are some similarities uh, in it. And we called it um, for the innovative teaching and learning leads. And, um, we, we saw something that was being delivered in another school district in Canada. And what they had done was basically they wanted, they were trying to implement laptops. Right. And you can tell you, this is obviously a long time ago because that's what they were, you know, and so they would give teachers a laptop, but at the end they had to take these 12 sessions. And then once they took the 12 sessions, once they did all, all that stuff, then they got a laptop, um, you know, at the end of it. And so they would have like 50 teachers a year. And basically what they would do was they would have 50 teachers have these technical skills and then they go out and, you know, so you had 50 more teachers with technical skills than when you started. So my superintendent asked me, he said, Hey, I want to, I want you to look at that program and see if we can implement it. I said, I don't, I don't, there's something I don't like about it. Um, let me tweak it and see what I can do. So, uh, what we, we are looking at, you know, 
uh, students having, you know, iPads and, you know, or like tablets at the time. And what we actually had said, I like what I said, I was like, Hey, how about instead of 12, we do six and it, because we do six and let's give the devices to the teachers in the program at the beginning, let them play with it, have it over summer, let their kids play with it. Just, just play around. Right. Um, but because they're doing six, they have to teach, uh, two sessions, you know, to their own staff. Right. And so, so, cause we wanted these, this learning to spread, right. Which is, I think is kind of the key to what you're doing, but when we identified, and this is why I asked you that question, when we identified who it was, uh, we actually said to our administrators to identify people they thought for the program, but the key was don't identify someone who's good with technology. Okay. Cause like, that's not what we're looking for now. If they're good with technology, that's great. But what we're looking for is people who have influence on your staff that when, so like if they're actually bad with technology, but they have influence and I can get them here and they go, Oh, this is amazing. And they're like, Susie thinks this is amazing. Then you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Right. Because like I was always good with technology, you know, in, in connection to school. And a lot of times that actually led to issues like, Oh, that's, that's a George thing. Right. And I, I the, and so we actually just brought people together, talked about teaching. And now some of the principals, I'll be honest with you, they didn't listen to anything I said. And they just sent people that wanted to learn. Like I want an app for kindergarten. I'm like, Nope, that's not what we're doing here. Right. But I'll teach you how to like, go find that on your own. 